Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be going through an overview of my very first 3D printer, the Monoprice MP Select Mini 3D printer shown here. I got this for $200 off of uh, monoprice.com. I'm going to be putting all of these videos about 3D printing under a playlist on my channel for 3D printing. I'm going through this for the first time and so I'll walk through steps with you, I'll run into uh, situations that I'll be able to fix and I'll make videos about these kinds of things. Uh, so if you want to uh, stay updated with my 3D printing experience, just uh, subscribe to my channel. First let's start with the components that come with this package. Uh, you'll see some components over here. Note, this does not come with it. This whole roll, this one kilogram roll of PLA plastic does not come with the setup. You get this little sample roll of white PLA that really isn't enough to really print anything. It's just for testing purposes. I'll show you what I uh, test printed later. But let's just go over the components first. So you start out with this printer. You get this little yellow plastic swiper thing, uh, which is good for uh, clearing some plastic off of the bed here and also clearing uh, plastic from the nozzle once you extrude it a little bit. You also get an Allen wrench for adjustments of the of leveling the bed used with these uh, screws over here, which I'll go over later. Uh, you get this cord that's used to connect the printer to your computer, and you get a micro SD card like this that you plug in over here, uh, which will house the G code that is used for the printer to print. And of course you get a power cord, which I've already plugged in over here, and it plugs into the back. You can see over here that I've put this roll onto this metal thing. This comes with it in the box and you slide it into a little support that's in there and this holds up the roll of PLA like this. Here you can see the mechanism where we insert the PLA into the tubing so that it's spring loaded here so you can push this. It's pretty high resistance on the spring loading because you want it to be uh, because you want this piece right here to be pushing the PLA against this motor here uh, which has uh, some grooves in there that you can see and this is so that uh, the computer or the the programming here will turn this guy here which will pull the PLA in so that it extrudes down. So you push this in, you feed in the PLA, and you keep pushing it in there, and then once it's in, you let it go like that, and you're set to go. This is where all the action happens. You have the, uh, you have the PLA coming down into this tube, and it feeds down through here, keeps going down, and this part right here, called the hot end, is heated, and uh, this is where the PLA will come out of. I'll show another shot of this in a second. These wires are for heating the hot end. There's also this wire that goes to the fan, and the fan is cooling this heat sink. You can see the aluminum heat sink here, uh, which is cooling the upper part of of where the PLA goes down. And then there's also, this fan is constructed such that it ducks some of the air down to cool the plastic coming out on your part. Just as a note, there's usually this, uh, it's a little hard to see here, but there's this zip tie that connects these wires here to a, this clip on here. And the reason I snipped it off is because I had a, a little clog that I had to clean out, and I'll go over that in another video. Here you can see the two ports for either the computer hookup, this guy, or the micro SD card. And so I'm going to take the micro SD card, and it fits into this slot here. And then you push it in, and it clicks in, and then you'll be able to see it on the, on the screen, which we'll get to in a second. Here's the power cord. The power cord is this guy, plugs into the back here, and then you flip this switch to turn it on. This here is the bed. This is where you're going to be making all your prints on. It's made out of metal. There's a, this piece of metal here that's uh, that's on top of this piece right here. Um, and it has four uh, of these uh, leveling points here. So there's one, two, and then there's three, four. And this is where you can use your Allen wrench to level the bed, as I'll talk about later. On top of this, you can see that it doesn't look like metal. It's because this has masking tape on it or some kind of something that feels like masking tape. and. Uh, people say you can also use uh, painter's tape if this gets worn out, and you can see it's already coming up a little bit over here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's already ripped a little bit here because I've made the first the first print that I made. I tried to push it off with a because it sticks pretty good, so I tried to push it off with a uh, with an Allen wrench, and it might have ripped it a little bit. But I've done two other prints on top of this, and it's fine. But I might replace it uh, in the next uh, the next time that I do a print. So this bed has movements in this direction. Then the uh, extruder here can traverse this direction and in the Z direction like this. So I've turned on the uh, printer now and you can see that the screen pops up with some messages. This is not a touch screen. There are three options here, print, temperature, or move. The first one you'll be using is move, then probably temperature, and then print. So you can see I can move back and forth with this scrolly wheel that has a nice blue light around it. and. The, the wheel is nice. Uh, sometimes it moves to somewhere that you don't want it to, and it has these grooves in it so that you can put your fingers and get some traction. Sometimes when it's really hot in here, like it is right now, my fingers get a little sweaty and then they kind of slip. It's pretty good uh, in general. And then to, to select something, you 
click it, so I press it like this, so I'm going into the move menu. So I'm into the first move, the first menu. There are six options here, x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, extruder, home axis, and then exit. Exit brings us back to the other menu. So right now it's on the x-axis, and you can barely see it, but there's a black border around it. When it's selected, I press it, and now the black border turns to blue. And then that, in that sense, now I can move the x-axis, as you can see up here, that this is moving. So when I rotate it counterclockwise, it moves it to the right. And then if I want to get off of that x-axis, I select it again, it turns black, and now I can move it to the next one, I can move it to y-axis. If I'm moving it counterclockwise, it pulls it back this way again, and then you can also do z-axis. Extruder moves that uh, up there, the... Uh, that spinny thing that pulls the uh, that pulls the PLA in and it pushes it through the nozzle. I won't mess with that right now. I'll show that in another video on how to get set up for your first print. Home axis is how we get is how we do the homing. So it moves uh, to hit the limit switches, and now it's doing the Z axis, which is pretty slow. It'll hit it. It'll click, and then it'll come back down again. And we need to level the bed before we start a print, and I'll talk about that in another video. And then. If we go out here, we have temperature. This is the other, or this is the, the next menu that you want to look at. There are two options here. There's the uh, extruder option and the platform. So there's the extruder and the platform. To start the preheating, we can select it, go in. We can set the target temperature so we can rotate up or down. I usually leave it at 50. And if you press it again, it'll start uh, preheating. In this case, it's only preheating the platform. And at any time, you can see the temperature starting to go up. At any time, we can stop the preheat and it'll just turn it off. It'll say preheat off for both of them. We can do the same thing for the extruder. And this is what I do before I start uh, printing. I will set the extruder temperature and the platform temperature, start the preheat, wait until these numbers get up to their set temperature, and then I'll exit, and I'll go to print, and it'll bring us in, and the reason that you can see this here now is because I have the SD card inserted, as you saw from before, and now we have all of these options in here. The first two, babyelephant.gcode and cat.gcode, are two of the uh, test pieces that you can print, uh, and I printed the cat one because it uh, took less time and used a little bit less plastic. Cura is the uh, is one of the programs that you can use to take your STL file and slice it so that the and put it into G codes so that your 3D printer can make it. This guy here is another one program, and these are uh, executable, so you can install them on your, on your computer. And then these two last ones, the Cura and Slicer, are uh, .G codes are two of the uh, models that I made myself, an inventor, and put over into either Cura or Slicer, the two programs that I use. Um, I happen to prefer Slicer or S-L-I-C-3-R slicer, um, just because I like the control that I have over the inputs and outputs a little bit better than the other uh, program, but they're both free, so you can mess around with either of them. When you're ready to print, you just uh, go to the one that you want, and then you click on it, and it'll start the printing for you. Overall, I would say the menu is very intuitive to use. It's easy to navigate. It's simple. There's not uh, super many options like I've seen on some of these other 3D printers. So if you're just getting started into 3D printing, I think that this is its very straightforward. You don't need a manual to navigate through all this. Now, I mentioned that you get this Allen wrench with the setup, and this is for the bed leveling, okay? And the other wrench that you need is, is a little bit smaller, and it's in my Allen key set, and I don't remember what size it is. Is, uh, but it was the smallest one in my Allen key set, and the reason I don't remember the size is because I put these back in the wrong places when I put them back in my set. But it's smaller than this one, and the reason that you would need this one is because there are, if I take off the fan, there are two set screws that hold this guy in place so that you can take this out, and then it, the other one holds the hot end in place. And so this guy will you can use to loosen the set screws and take them out. And I'll show that in another video of how to unclog a jam. Uh, but you might need a smaller Allen wrench than the one given. Another tool that you might need that does not come with it is a, uh, in this case, I use a number seven uh, wrench here. And this is because the, the hot end nozzle, which I believe is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, this guy will be able to unscrew that from the heating the heating block. You might recall that I said that the that this whole print system does not come with this one kilogram spool. It comes with a little bit of white, uh, in my case, white PLA. And that was enough to print this, which is the cat.g code. And you might not think that this is a cat, but it actually is part of a cat. Uh, but that's how much I got to print with the uh, sample spool. Now this I printed yesterday. This is the full cat, and that actually looks more like a cat. So you can see that uh, I didn't print everything, uh, but you get 
a little bit just to test it out. After doing three uh, or four prints, I would say that the most important part is the bed leveling. If you don't have a level bed with your nozzle the right height above the bed, you won't get that first layer down correctly and your whole print will be completely messed up. So if I were to say anything that is most important here, it is that you level your bed, make sure you do it right before you start your print. Check it out on your first layer of your print and if it's stupid looking, then you should stop and re-level the bed. Now, the thing is, when I open this up, this tape was all the way over on here. And of course, you need to be able to get to these uh, screws in order to level the bed uh, with the Allen wrench. So I took my uh, razor blade like this and I just cut a square out of the corners. So, you know, I'm trying to do this by looking at my camera. Cut this, cut that, and just took those pieces off because I'm not anticipating that I'm going to be printing all the way over here anyway. And this allows me, I did this on the back too, this allows me to, uh, to level the bed a little bit easier. I'll be posting another video on bed leveling for this 3D printer, uh, so check out the link that's on the screen or in the video description for that. All in all, I think this printer is pretty great. It's really easy to set up. The menus are simple. Uh, just getting the first thing to print is very easy as long as you have the bed leveled. And so I really like this guy. I did mention that I had that clog and it was a little disheartening after my first print, but I think it's because of the way that I didn't pull out the PLA after it's done printing, or I actually ended up canceling the print because there wasn't enough PLA to finish. So it might have been the way that it shut down and then I just turned it off so it might not have cooled down correctly. So I'm still playing around with that, but I did, or I was able to fix the clog and it was super simple to do. And I'll show that in another video again, posted on the screen here or in the video description. And just as a final plug uh, for future videos, this is something that I printed yesterday uh, obviously my logo JTE Josh the engineer with a little bit of extra plastic back here because in my model I forgot to uh, delete that but uh, it's one of these things where you can shine the light on the J and the E and you can see a shadow on the wall and I uh, thought that was pretty cool and I'll go through the process of building a model getting an STL file putting it into either cure or slicer and then uh, putting it on your micro SD card putting it in your printer and printing it so stay tuned for some more videos on uh, 3D printing. I'm really excited about this. Thanks for watching.